Hey guys, what's up? This is Bri. Happy Sunday. Sitting here crushing it, working on um, a note on this great book, Drive All Driven, rather. Doug Brackman, thank you, sir. Uh, I will share one of my favorite ideas from that in a moment. I'll also share what I've worked on before I started working on that, and I'll share a little bit of my process of creating a philosopher's note for those interested. But first, one, two, three, public accountability, stepping up my game. Readiness is great. Sleep was um, very good. So then the thing that I found amusing today was, um, again, I'm super happy about this. Um, Somebody put a comment, I'm reading the YouTube comments these days, which I haven't in a long time, that there's some like, oh, it's too low, the resting heart rate, there's some issue with that, bradycardia or something like that. Yes, and if I had dizziness and whatever, then we'd be concerned. Um, I'm fired up, well-trained heart recovered properly, et cetera. Then I Googled, who's got the lowest resting heart rate? Michael Phelps's resting heart rate was 38 at his peak, which is cool. So anyway, celebrating some funness there. And then the heart rate variability uh, at 84 will take it. But then the, the amusing thing for me was um, the consistency. Again, I pride myself on consistency. We'll talk more about some equations we've developed about how consistency is everything. Um, but the, the time in bed, I showed this to Alexandra, she and Eleanor got up early today, nine hours and 13 minutes, and then nine hours and 12 minutes, nine hours and 14 minutes, and nine hours and 12 minutes, which you remember, I started that experiment after I got eight hours and nine. I didn't feel great. So I said, I got to be in bed for nine hours. And then boom, here we go. Seven hours and 53 minutes of sleep, 7.52, 7.55, 7.56. Now, the point I want to make here is more, that's funny to me. Um, But also consistency matters and what you measure improves. So when you pay attention to things, again, science is unequivocal. If you give someone a pedometer to count their steps, they'll walk a mile more. Just simply giving them a pedometer. I mean, it's astonishing. So even if you don't have an aura ring or a Fitbit or whatever, what I used to do before they came out with this technology and before I knew about the technology was I would literally write down what time I went to bed. Right. So last night I went to bed at time they go to bed at 8.58, right? So I'd write write that down. Oh, cool, went to bed at 8.58. And then I'd write down what time I got up. And I literally used exactly this, just a little big oversized index card. And then when did I get up? Okay, cool. And that that was my rough calculation. At the time, I didn't know this. I didn't know about sleep efficiency. So I was actually not getting enough sleep. I would often get, you know, in bed for seven or eight hours and I wasn't getting adequate sleep. I felt okay, but nowhere near where I feel now. Anyway, you do this, you're going to improve, and you also want to know that science says consistency of your bedtime is actually the number one tip in all the sleep research. Going to bed at a consistent time, then you wake up around the same time as well, but you set the consistency with when you go to bed. Now, you don't need high-tech stuff to do that. Longer chat, we'll leave it at that. Then what I did was my normal journaling, got blessed with some awesome notes. This one just cracked me up. So I do live coaching with our coaches, right, twice a month. We get together. And Christian, you cracked me up, brother. He says, I just watched last Friday's live coaching with Brian. Now, he's always good. Thank you, sir. But that was Coltrane blowing on giant steps at 300 beats per minute. Good. Apologies to the non-musicians. It means he was on fire. And then, Dave, appreciate your kind words. I kind of went off. One of our coaches, Leo, one of my favorite guys, asked me a question about creativity. And we've talked about his creativity before. And I kind of went off. And this is at the end of like a two and a half hour session. But Dave said that, you know, he'd been around me for 10 years and this was absolute gold again. Thank you, Dave. But then he said one word that I said, I don't even know what it was and more has me on fire. Like I've never been before. Sometimes it just takes one thing. Somebody says that can alter everything. If we pay attention to it, oh, tears, my eyes. that's it. One idea can literally transform our lives. Now we then need to go do the work to show up day in and day out. But when we aggregate and compound these tiny little gains, we can make a significant difference in our lives. So that leads us to the uh, PEMF table, where I keep my wall calendar, by the way. Journaling 101 um, class, I, I introduced this, this wall calendar. So I keep track of my days on a month-long wall calendar, which now doesn't live on my wall. It's currently living here. Uh, anyway, just stoked. You know, I can keep track of my daily goals. My targets right now are 40 hours of like solid, deep work which is challenging to do. No inputs, no distractions on what's most important right now. Not teamwork, deep work. So I'm fired up about that. But this is what really fired me up this morning. I spent a half an hour doing my normal journaling and then also 
included in that time was was this the journaling being about five or ten minutes of it so I, I basically went back through my notes that I haven't done PNTVs on yet and this is probably maybe like a hundred notes so we've got over 600 but I am genuinely just fired up to hit the PNTV studio we have some extraordinary books um, Tiny Habits the guy on habits food fix Mark Hyman amazing Freak Factor, funny, Jay-Z was a good note. Fearless, this one's, um, I did a presentation for Navy SEALs and a captain who ran character development at the Naval Academy, Captain Bob, appreciate you, brother, um, told me this is the one book you have to read. Fearless by Eric Blem about Adam Brown, it's amazing. Um, and then White Fragility, that was a good book. Uh, sea Stories, William McRaven, Make Your Bed, William McRaven, Upward Spiral on the Neuroscience of Depression. Uh, a couple of these I didn't know if I'd done notes on before. Anyway, I'm going through this and I'm like, oh my God, these are going to be so good. Um, how to think like a Roman emperor. We've got a ton on stoicism I'll be doing. Mark Devine's new book, Staring Down the Wolf. Second Mountain, that was really fantastic. David Brooks, Discipline Equals Freedom, Jocko Willing. hoo Joy of Movement, Kelly McGonigal, one of the best books I've read in the last couple of years and period. Um, on the science of exercise. Pilar Gerasimo, my dear friend, her great book, The Healthy Deviant, um, The Science of Character Strengths, Why Gratitude Works, The Science of Courage. Um, again, I kind of got on a positive psychology mix. I went back and forth between positive psychology and stoicism. Um, practicing stoic is fantastic. Ward Farnsworth is the um, dean of the UT Law School. Dave Asprey, superhuman, super inspiring. That guy is a superhuman boss. Um, Jim Quick's Limitless, uh, Tom Morris, leading philosopher, love him. Plato's Lemonade Stand was great, basically about being anti-fragile. Anyway, I'm fired up, and now I'm hustling this week to get ahead with plus ones and with philosopher's notes, because all I'm going to do for a month is PNTVs. I'm going to, the goal is to crush 150 philosopher's notes TV episodes in a month. And then share one, one a day, between basically when I launch it in September and our fourth optimized coach class, which kicks off in February. So we've got class one, two, three is launching right now. And then class four is going to be in February. So between here and there, I'm going to share three things a day. Plus ones, I always do that. Number ones, these, and PNTVs. Super fired up. In fact, I'm driven. Boom. Which leads us to this great book. And what I'm working on. So, again, I fold over pages that are like those, wow, that can change your life, big idea, right? That I want to remember and I think you would benefit from. Then, I get to work creating a note, six-page PDF, starts in INDD, in design, right? And here I am typing out, we shared this quote yesterday, a master in the art of living. So, the basic idea here is that you may have a genetic mutation that leads to a certain level of drivenness. It's called the DRD2A1 and DRD47R. Now, I don't have it. I've done genetic testing and I don't have this DRD2A1. I might have the DRD47R. I don't know. I haven't done that. But I do know that I'm rather driven. So our environmental conditions, he says, can also induce certain driven behaviors, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, if you are driven, and if you're watching this, you'll probably be pretty close, if not over the edge, um... You need to control that energy. You need to know how to use that energy wisely, right? So I talk about the paradoxical truth that, that um, Doug talks about, etc. But then the whole note can be summarized basically in this one little passage here. When the driven thrive, their gifts bring extraordinary outcomes for themselves in society. So you've got gifts. If you're driven, you have gifts, right? Quit shaming yourself. You just have an intensity level that not everyone has. That's fine. Evolutionarily, we needed you to be intense. He says the trick is to harness those gifts to work for us rather than undermine our efforts. And you can only do that when you build structures. So I talk a lot about structures and emotional stamina and protocols. And I say, look, the more intense you are, I don't know where I put it in here, but the more intense you are, the more committed you need to be to your basic structures. What do you do when you have a good night of sleep? What do you do when you get up and you crush it creatively in the morning? Figure out what you do when you're on and do that more often. And do the stuff that doesn't work less often. It really, at the end of the day, isn't that complicated. Um, but we need to develop the discipline and realize that paradoxically, discipline equals freedom. Which he says, and happens to be the name of a book by Jocko Willink, 
who is the most driven human being on the planet. Um, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, there you go. How are your practices? How are your disciplines? Get on it. Here's what I did this morning to remind myself of my practices. This is the, how I start every day. I start with the big high level kind of destiny, what I call soul goals and wildly important targets, which is hitting a thousand philosopher's notes, 196 weeks and four days until I turn 50. Boom. Focus on the process. Then I did some planning of how I'm going to get ahead and what I'm going to do on philosopher's notes. I don't expect you to be able to read any of that, but that's what I described in terms of what I'm going to focus on next. And then I say, look, this is my protocol. I'm going to work my protocol and my identities drive my virtues, which drive my behaviors, which is our big three times two. I'm an athlete. I pride myself on showing up like a world-class athlete training and recovering. I'm actually working out much less hard than I am now and seeing better numbers. Interesting. Moving out more, moving more frequently rather than over long durations. Um, That's my identity. Energy, work, and love-wise, right? Our big three times two. Identity, virtues, behaviors. The number one virtue I embody consistently to harness my drive, because I know what it's like, by the way. He talks about the fact that if you don't harness the drive in this idea here, then good luck. Then, then it leads to addictive behavior, um, et cetera. And I actually talked about Adam Brown, the, one of the most renowned Navy SEALs ever. Before he became a Navy SEAL, he was a drug addict. And then you have Jay-Z, who is obviously one of the you know, most successful, powerful artists and entrepreneurs in history. Before he was uh, you know, a great artist, he was a drug dealer. These guys have tons of drive. And as Michael Eric Dyson says in his biography of Jay-Z called Jay-Z, Made in America, you can have blight hustle or bright hustle. If you don't channel your drive, you're going to have blight. You're going to have negative expression of it versus bright. Anyway, the way I channel it is via this identity, big three times two. I'm an athlete. I'm disciplined. This is what I'm going to do today. I'm a philosopher. I'm prolific. This is what I'm going to do today. I'm a soulmate. I'm connected to my wife and kids and you virtually. And this is what I'm going to do today. We got a zoo trip, kind of fired up, local zoo, pet the monkeys, the hippos. It's pretty awesome. Um, Boom. There we go. So the question again is, what's your protocol? Who are you at your best? Are you being that consistently? Let's get on it. Never abstractly, always concretely, moving from theory to practice to mastery today.